Hi, welcome to Glow's Kinder Kitchen and I'm Glow. Well today I'm going to be making a strawberry shortcake and I thought I'd show you how I do it. And I wanted to share with you first where I got my uh, shortcake recipe from. For years I had always made, you know, the traditional shortcake, you know, kind of like a biscuit. And then uh, one year I had purchased this um, recipe book from the Dillard House and they're in, located in Northwest Georgia, just over the line from uh, Western North Carolina. And it's called the Dillard House. If you guys have never been down there, if you're ever in the area, by all means, go there. It is a beautiful valley and this woman had started this place years ago. In fact, my dad started going there in the 50s when he would travel, he would stay at her. It's kind of like a bed and breakfast, if you will. But it's turned into a huge place now and it's a lot of fun for families and friends and it's all family style. But anyway, in the cookbook is a recipe for Catherine's favorite cake right here. And that's what I'm gonna make. Uh, ever since we tried this recipe, I don't usually make the sh regular traditional shortcake anymore. This is just delicious. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to cream some sugar and also some shortening, which I already measured out. It calls for one and a half cups of granulated white sugar. So I'm going to go ahead and pour that in this bowl. And then to that, it calls for two thirds of a cup of shortening. Kind of like Crisco, you, whatever you have on hand, use. This is a particular brand I got at Aldi. Let me just get something to scrape that off of the spoon. There we go. So I'm just put that right there. And one of these measuring cups comes in really handy because you can measure down. There's a side for solids and a side for liquids. So you got to make sure which one you use. But like for two thirds, you just put it right. Let me find that. The line is right there. You just fill that up and pack that shortening down in there. And then you just push it in and it's so much easier. So I thought I'd show you that. So anyway, I've got my meter and my beaters plugged in. Always put your beaters in your mixer though before you plug in. And then I'm just going to blend this together. So this takes a couple of minutes, so I'll be back in just a couple of minutes and I'll show you the next step. Well, I got my shortening and my sugar all incorporated in here nicely combined. And the next thing we're going to do is be adding eggs. But I need to share with you, I said it was in Northwest Georgia, and guess what? Richard, my husband, he's the one that's filming this, and after we stopped, he said to me, that's not in Northwest Georgia, that's Northeast Georgia. And he pulled the map out, and sure enough, he was right, of course. So anyway, um, I just wanted to share that with you. It's right over our state line in Southwest North Carolina but it's in Northeast Georgia. So sorry about that, but it is a beautiful place. So anyway, we're gonna add the eggs now, one at a time. And I always tap here on my counter and I'll go ahead and put it in this bowl. And then I'll put it in. Reason I do that is in case there's um, blood or something like that in the egg. You don't want that in your food. So I'm going to go ahead and incorporate this first one. And you just do it until it's nicely incorporated and then we're going to do the next one. So let's do one more. Open it up. No shell, no blood. We're good to go. Looks, looks good. So pour that one in. You can see how now it's getting creamier with each addition of the egg. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and put the next one, the last egg in. 
and then we'll be back and we'll continue. Well, I just now got the third egg incorporated. Can you see how nice that looks? Nice and creamy. So creamy, Miss Well. Incorporation is the key. It is. So anyway, now we're going to add one teaspoon of real vanilla. And please use real vanilla, not the imitation. There's a big difference in flavor. So now we're going to just combine that. the next step is we have two ingredients left to use. One is flour and this recipe calls for three or I'm sorry two and three quarters cups of self-rising flour. I don't keep self-rising flour on hand. I always make my own and I have a recipe that I just did for that and I will do a link for it at the bottom of this video in case you're one of those like myself that doesn't keep that on hand. It's super easy to make and then milk. So the recipe calls for us to start off with the flour. So it, since it's two and three quarters, I have one, a one cup measuring cup here. So I'll be measuring out two of the, this. And then the last cup will be three quarters of a cup. So, and I'll use my three quarters cup measuring cup for that. And then I'll have a quarter of a cup or approximately that left and I'll be putting that in a little jar that I always keep my extra self-rising flour in. So, it says to start off with your flour. So I'm just going to measure off one cup here. There we go. So I'm going to put my beater down in here. Just sprinkle a little in at a time. Scrape the sides of the bowl. Beat it again so it gets incorporated. And then this recipe calls for one and a third cups of milk, which I pre-measured here. So I'm going to pour a little of that in. And we'll incorporate that. Now we're going to put a little bit of the flour mixture in again. Hi, well, let's finish up this um, flour here. This is three quarters of a cup now that we have to incorporate. This is the last of the milk. And remember, we have to end with the flour. A little bit more of the flour in. I'm going to stop it for a minute just to scrape the edges of the bowl so we can get it all incorporated here. And why do you have to end with the flour, Miss Cole? Why do I have to what? And you said end with the that's flour. That's what the recipe calls for. Oh, I Reason see. Reason why, I'm not really sure, but that's what it says and that's what I've always done. So. I see. And it turns out great, so I'm Fine. sure they know what they're talking about. Fine. Maybe if one of you knows the reason why, you could let us know. Okay, here's 
the rest of the milk. And again, that was one and a third cup of milk. I use whole milk. It doesn't call for that, but that's what I've always used. to turn that down to my lowest setting so it doesn't make a huge mess. I'm going to scrape the edges of my bowl one more time. Get it all incorporated. before I take my beaters out. I just tap them on the side of my bowl. Get as much off as I can. Get my hands off here. And I'm going to take a spatula, a rubber spatula. I'm just going to get everything scraped up here before we pour it into the pan. Now, you can make this in two round cake pans, eight inch cake pans to make, you know, a double layer cake. You can make it in a nine by 13, which I'm doing today. And um, the other thing you can do is you can make it in this or in the eight inch, you know, pie plate or pie or cake pan. But if you do that, um, you, well, first of all, you can use, you know, an eight inch or a nine inch, but you know, for the cake pan. But um, you can make a trifle with this too, with all kinds of berries. This is just an awesome recipe. So anyway, now I'm just going to scrape this in here. Pour it in and scrape it in. You guys see that going in? Yes. And I've got my oven preheating to 350 degrees. And I'm going to bake this for 25 to 30 minutes. Yeah. Get a spoon here and scrape this off. This is so yummy. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in my preheated oven and I'll see you back in 25 to 30 minutes. Bye. Well, I just took Catherine's favorite cake out of the oven. And one of the signs you can tell if it's done if it springs back, which it does. And I'm going to put the toothpick in. We'll see. If it comes out clean, you know it's done. And it is. This actually took 35 minutes today. So, um, Oh, you know, start off on the low side. I had my timer originally at 25 minutes, but it took 35. So anyway, we need to let this cool, and then we're going to be serving this with strawberries and whipped cream, and I'll show you what it looks like in the end. We'll be back in a while. Our strawberries are all rinsed really well, and I brought them over on my colander with my plate underneath so it doesn't get your counter all dirty. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the top out. These particular berries don't have much of a core in them at all. So now what you want to do is you can cut them like this lengthwise or you can cut them like this. Like in circles. Widthwise. Yep. So whatever way you want to do it. Let's do another one. Let's do it 
it this way this time. There. So I'm going to continue with this and I'll be back with you in just a little bit and I'll show you what else I do. Well, we got our strawberries all cut up. So we did some of the round and some of the ones that are, you know, lengthwise. So now what I'm going to do is, I, these are very sweet strawberries. Uh, you could eat these plain and they're just delicious, but I need to make like a simple syrup to go on it. So I'm going to shake on, this is a third of a cup. We probably aren't going to need all of that. So I used a little over half of that. And now what we're going to do is add some just water. I have a cup of water here. So see how much have I put in. I've put in half of that so far. So let's stir this up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this up and then I'm going to let this set at room temperature. And we're going to see what kind of juice this makes. We might have, might have to add a little bit more sugar or a little bit more water, but I always start off with less. My old saying is less is more. You don't want your berries too sweet. So anyway, Lucy, I don't know if you would like this or not, honey. You might so, need to go out. Anyway, we'll see you back uh, when it's time for dessert. Well, our strawberries have been here setting with the sugar and the water on them for a while now. And it was a quarter cup of sugar total that I put on this and three quarters cup of water. So let me go ahead and sample this for you. I'm just going to sample some of the syrup from it. Oh, it's perfect. These strawberries were very sweet before we even started. And then by adding that just a little bit of sugar and that water to it, we have a wonderful juice now to go on our strawberry shortcake. So this is just really good. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and put together the dessert for us and then our, our son, Maxime, will be the one that'll be sampling it for us. See you back in a few minutes. Hi, well, our dessert is ready to eat. And Maxime, our youngest son, has decided to he would be our taste tester tonight. So, Max, it's up to you now here to taste it and tell us how good it is. All right, very good. Mmm, mm, that's very good. It's really moist. Mmm, strawberries are good too. I'm just sitting here and just eat the entire thing. Strawberries are nice. They're given that tart, but the cake's really sweet, so it has a nice, like, balance. I like it. It's very good. Well, thank you, Maxine. Of course. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video, we would really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up or a comment. And thank you for joining us tonight. Talk to you later. Bye.